Hey everyone, welcome to this new lesson on painting a waterfall, which is going to focus on water and rocks primarily. So to begin here, I want you to use the reference photograph and just do a very quick pencil drawing of the big shapes. And then we're going to start with a brown and ultramarine blue. You can use, I recommend transparent red oxide, but you can use any brown like burnt sienna. No white. Just take a small round brush and you're basically going to use the brush as a sort of pencil just to kind of go over the pencil lines. And then we're going to use the same brush and we're basically going to do an underpainting that is similar to a watercolor wash. So the entire underpainting is going to be transparent color. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically blocking in the dark shapes, the areas of dark shadow first. And as you know, in oil paint, you work from dark to light and in watercolor, you work from light to dark. So in oil paint, at the very start of a painting that is more uh, a la prima or wet in wet, you're gonna wanna start with just blocking in your dark shapes. And a quick way to to do a painting is to kind of tackle a lot of things at the same time. So the idea here is to get your underpainting done with your drawing and get the values relative light to dark shapes. That's what values means in this context. You get all that done basically in the first five to 10 minutes. So you're basically getting all of the hard work out of the way right off the bat. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm starting to thin the color out more. So when you're working with no white and just transparent color, the more odorless mineral spirits or turpentine that you add to it, the thinner washes that you're gonna get. So you're able to create lighter, uh, lighter values of rock by simply adding more of the odorless mineral spirits to it. So the less odorless mineral spirits and the thicker the paint, the darker black it's gonna look. So this is how you're able to create an extremely, some painters create extremely detailed paintings with just these two colors and nothing else. You'll see periodically that I also wet a paper towel and then put a bunch, pull a bunch of paint off the palette like that right there and I spread it around with the paper towel, but you need to make sure that you dip the paper towel into the odorless mineral spirits because it needs to be wet in order to spread it like this. And this is kind of similar to some techniques that you'll learn in watercolor. So it even has the appearance of a watercolor wash. You see that? And the reason I'm using blue and brown is because with just those two simple colors, you can create beautiful browns and then bluish grays. 
So you're able to get this vibrant mix between blue and uh, kind of an orange brown. And just those two simple colors, blue and orange, create a really nice feel. So this painting is going to be very loose. It's not a super photorealistic type technique. So it should be very easy for those of you who are more beginner to intermediate level. So you notice, um, I'm basically looking at the reference down there in the lower left hand corner and I'm doing my best to kind of block in the shadow shapes on these rocks. So that's the thing with rocks is that they are a solid object that is reflecting light in different ways. So with a rock you get bright highlights where the sun is shining off and you're getting almost pure white. Then you're getting middle value which is like uh, usually just slightly darker than the highlights and in between the uh, dark pattern, or I'm sorry, shadow. So you have highlight, middle value, the shadow, and then reflected light into the shadow. So you wanna look for all of these four patterns in the rocks and simplify it into just simple brush strokes. So in this phase right now where we're doing just transparently, I'm not going to be uh, actually going over how to paint the rocks. I'm just blocking in the big shapes. So just do your best to follow along. All right, so now I have squeezed out a palette of titanium white, a yellow ochre kind of raw sienna mixture. You can just use yellow ochre or raw sienna. Bright red from Windsor & Newton, ultramarine blue, and transparent red oxide. So it's a very limited palette. Right now with the brush, I'm mixing up a large area of kind of a bluish gray for the rocks. So sometimes you'll see me use a palette knife to mix or a, a bristle brush. This is a, a size eight bristle brush. And you basically would use a brush to mix up thick paint because you want the painting to be thicker and have thick brush strokes. So you'll notice that during this lesson, I'm not using small brushes that much. I'm using a larger bristle brush to get thick textures, and I'm gonna be using the palette knife a lot. So in order to follow along with this, you need to have a bristle brush size eight, and you need to have a metal palette knife. So this mixture right here is a mixture of that bluish gray mixture, and I've mixed it into white and a little bit of transparent red oxide. And notice you get kind of a peachy color with streaks of blue going through it. 
The reason I mixed it streaky like that is because I want to keep the broken bits of color between the peachy color and that blue. So if I mixed with the palette knife that pile too much, I would mix all of that beautiful uh, streaky color out of it and you don't want to do that. So here I'm just taking the bristle brush and lightly kind of putting some of that bluish gray over the transparent kind of watercolor underpainting. And notice I'm not covering it up completely. I'm letting some of the underpainting show through. So you're just bait, lightly skimming that brush across the surface, not putting on the paint too thickly. All right, so just kind of condensing that paint down and creating some room for myself. So now we're gonna mix up kind of a blue for the background. So I'm going to have to change this photo reference um, a little bit. So what I'm going to do is create the illusion that the river on top of the waterfall goes way back into the distance back there. So I start by putting in the darks first adding a little bit lighter blue to that. And this is all grayed down, but it's still in the blue purple area of the color spectrum, even though it's grayed. And then over in areas, I'm gonna add a little bit of that yellow ochre to the mixture for a kind of dark green that I'm kind of putting towards the ground in the background to just lightly indicate some foliage that's kind of obscured back there. So if you look at like a lot of Richard Schmid waterfall paintings, you'll see this kind of thing done where everything in the distance is very abstract. It's just, you know, random brush strokes of green and blue. And when you step back, it creates the illusion of reality. But up close, it's really just abstract kind of brush strokes and whatnot. So I'm kind of going for that same thing here. This is just a study of a waterfall. It's not meant to be like a, a very realistic scene. All right, so mixing up that warm gray there, I can basically block in these rocks with that warm gray that you see on the palette and the kind of bluish gray. And then I can paint into that wet paint and sculpt the rocks. So I'm using kind of fairly thick brush strokes. The brush I'm using is a, a flat, um, it's a synthetic bristle, so it's not a hog, ha a hog hair bristle, it's synthetic but it's still fairly firm so i'm not using a small round i'm using a brush that can handle a bit more thick paint and here i'm just mixing right into the uh, the white right into transparent red oxide 
and a little bit of blue, and that gives me a warm gray like that. And this represents the areas of the rocks in that photo reference that are being hit by a light. So I'm adding some distant rocks up here, just the abstract um, feel of distant rocks back there. And I, I'm doing that just to kind of change the scene a little bit. All right, now we're gonna begin kind of painting in the water. And a lot of this waterfall, one of the keys to painting moving water is to paint all of the dark underlayer first. So I've seen a lot of you trying to paint ripples in, in foamy water and waterfalls, and you're totally doing it the wrong way and making it harder for yourself. It's actually a lot easier if you just paint the entire waterfall a dark blue first, representing the shadow areas, and then you take lighter white on top of that and just paint wet into wet on top. And you can kind of squish that paint around. So over the next, you know, 30 minutes, you'll see me work on this. And this is basically how I approach moving water. I'm just painting in all of these darker blue shapes first before I paint the white foam. Thank you. 